All right, well, you, you break your hand on the first punch of the fight. Is that right? I mean, give me an idea of what's going through your head at that moment. Um, it was weird, you know. Um, I knew what happened. I knew it was a serious thing, but I knew I had to keep fighting. You know, like, these guys are keep coming after me. He's a dangerous guy, you know. He keeps walking forward. He doesn't stop no matter how many times I hit him to the body, but I felt the crack. I closed my fist again. I felt the click. And then um, I ended up tripping up in the first round. He ended up taking my back. And my coaches and my corners yelling, fight two hands, fight with two hands. And I'm fighting with one hand because I couldn't close the other one. So I just, it just made it very difficult. He had it under my neck, but I was able to push his elbow up just above my chin and just, you know, survive. Because I knew it was short time. So if I knew if I just survived there, we're going to stand up again. And I was going to have to keep on his right side because I couldn't really throw that left. I threw it, trying to aim with the bigger knuckles. That's why the middle one's kind of swollen now. But I try not hitting with the small knuckles, but... You know, it landed a couple times, but um, I guess it kind of went numb. <laughs> so um, I just, you know, fought through it. Nice. It was pretty crazy. You, you, it was like you said, he was on the back. I mean, uh, I wonder what's going through your head. Like, in some way, do you take some pride that you got out of that position? Or, do, I mean, it's obviously not. Definitely. It was a defining moment right there, like, in, in all of my career, to be honest with you. It was like, like deja vu, and that's where I've been finished the most, was somebody taking my back with that body triangle, with the rear naked choke. And he was close. He was close. I was choking. And it was just a defining moment, like, where I, I got to be honest with you guys, you know. And, like, this probably goes to a lot of fighters' heads, but I'm not trying to cover it up with no, any, any false machismo. I wanted, at one point, let him have it. You know, it's already too close. But something else kicked inside of me and said, man, fuck this shit. You know what I'm saying? We're getting out of this. And then um, I was able to turn my hips, start pushing his elbow, and I just felt that fight in me just kept rising and rising. I'm like, it's not going to happen again. And I really put it in my head. It was like visualization during the actual actualization of the fight, and it really pulled me through. Quite the battle you guys had. I mean, it was going back and forth. Like you said, he's a tough guy. Uh, at the end, I mean, did, did you feel you had done enough? Were you concerned? Now, at the end, um, I knew he was just, um, just no, nothing was landing. He was just trying to hold me down. And um, really, um, I didn't want to give him the opportunity again. So the, the my biggest concern was replacing guard. I didn't have enough time to secure a submission. We were way too damn sweaty to do anything like that. So, and bloody and everything was just too greasy. And so it was just, I knew that once I secured my guard again, because he was in half guard, I was going to be able to like just hold him there. And like he didn't have enough time to do anything. He was just throwing wild just to be active and busy. And he was just waiting for me to do something to slip up. So I heard the 10 second marker and I'm like, even if I stand up, it's not going to change anything. I busted him up too much, and, you know, we exchanged a lot of good blows, but I know I got the better of him every single time in the combinations. Having that gut check moment that you had, man, I mean, do you feel like this does something for you as a martial artist? I mean, that this is like a turning point or, or, or something, you know, a launching point for something new? Well, definitely. Um, like, um, Coach Crouch, um, we were talking about it before, and I think he said it the best when I was trying to explain it. Um, I'm like, I'm not a prize fighter, you know, I'm not a fighter in general, you know, um, I'm a martial artist and I do this not for anything but to answer a question. So it's just really to getting to know myself, really to express myself and understand who I am and where do I stand against the best fighters in the world. So I think that answer the big question in my heart, you know, like how much heart do I have? How much fight do I have in me? Do I really want to be here? And every time I step inside that cage, it's yes. It's damn yes. Yeah. Do you prepare differently for this fight compared to your others? Uh, yes, actually, yeah. Um, I took jujitsu a lot more seriously. I started training a lot more, threw on the gi, um, and I, I hit, I, I hit all the classes, as much classes as I could, as much as my body could take. And it was very draining and very tiring and frustrating at times. But I really embraced that grind, and um, I think that's one of the biggest turning points. It made me feel com more comfortable just um, being able to avoid takedowns, or if I did get taken down, I knew I was, I knew I could fight through it. And I think that was the one of the biggest defining moments when he had my back. That. I knew I've been here before too many times to give up at that moment. I know you have to take some time off for your hand, but what, what's next for you? Uh, well, let's see how much time we got to take off. You know, I can move it now. I couldn't move it before, and now I can. I have some range of motion, so it might not be as bad as it as I thought it was, but I'm pretty sure it's still broken. <laughs> <laughs> but I pretty I heal pretty damn fast, so um, we'll see what's up. Bruce Leroy, can we see? It? Can you show it to us? Hey, I was uh, I was very surprised. doing medical evaluation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a <laughs> um, you were on your horse a lot in the fight, but I was very surprised that when y'all engaged, you were willing to to brawl with Ocho Peterson, which is dangerous to do. Uh, was that uh, part of the strategy, or was just kind of heat of the moment, and you just felt it? Well, no, honestly, um, after we exchanged a couple times, um, and it's not taking away anything anything away from him, but I knew he was throwing just to engage a clinch or to engage a takedown. Um, his punches. Um, some of them were landing hard, but decently hard, but it was nothing that made me feel like I was in trouble. 
he was throwing to close the distance. So I knew that when I was inside that pocket and I was throwing, I was hurting him. And it wasn't necessarily the same exchange. But um, he was coming forward. He was throwing a lot. Um, I did try to cover and move and dodge a whole bunch as well. I don't want to get hit by something thinking that he's throwing soft because it's, it could be just that that slight one that clips you. But um, other than that, I knew that um, I felt comfortable in there. And I do it a lot in the gym. You know, I'm not afraid to stand there and bang. And we all know that from my previous histories of all my fights. If you want to stand there and throw with me, I'm going to throw with you. Um, so, no, I wasn't really concerned. Who are your main sparring partners to prepare for Ocho Pierce? He has a distinct style. He moves forward a lot. He's very aggressive. Uh, well, we have a lot of great um, aggressive wrestlers, you know, at the lab um, that, that I sparred with. Um, Alex Arredondo, Vince Arredondo, both twins, you know, they, they really push the pace a lot. Um, we had Tommy McClellan, that was one of my sparring partners. Benson Henderson was one of my main sparring partners. Um, so, people with that apply that pressure, you know, that incredible pressure, non-stop cardio, just keep coming forward, um, closing that distance. I think those were the greatest um, sparring partners I could have. And last question for me, um, I saw a little psychological warfare and they kept smiling at him and I know that really gets under his skin. You felt like that threw him <laughs> off his game at all? I don't know if it was psychological, where I'm just enjoying myself, you know, and um, when I started smiling, is um, it's just a show of appreciation that I can see that he had the fight in him too and, you know, we're, we're both we're both men here, and we're both here to stand in front of each other. And we, I, I felt it was a, it was a show of respect. I'm not trying to mock anybody. I'm not trying to psychologically move anybody out of their game. It was just, you know, like, fuck, man, we're here. You know, good job. Let's do this. Does that go hand in hand with your intro song? A lot of people loved it around me because it's just like so unexpected. It was just like good vibes. Is that one of your favorite songs? Um, well, it's one of my previous um, intro songs and. Before the fight, since I had so many songs, they had the whole library of all my songs. I told them, okay, you guys make a pool and you guys pick the song that you want to hear me walk out to next because I was tired of picking a new song. So, like, let's pick one of the songs that I came out to. And it was perfect. I mean, it was on key for what we were trying to do was express myself. And, like, I couldn't pick it better myself. Yeah, it went very well. Like, just with your facial expressions out there. Well, is there a certain fighter you want to fight? <laughs> No, I, I, I honestly don't watch the sport at all, so I don't know who's too much in my weight class. So, um, unless the people that I fought before, but um, whoever they give me next, honestly, I'm pretty much down. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Thank you very much.